This is the Fire Life. Medic 11. We still have quite a bit of fire in the water. The podcast that takes you inside Adams County Fire Rescue. It's difficult to understand. There's there's definitely a um, a deeper and, uh, I guess, darker side, if you will, to this job. The inherent risk firefighters face. But I felt hopeless. I felt helpless in those moments. It's not just fire. As a matter of fact, it rarely is. For my birthday last year, I got diagnosed for with cancer. Cancer rates for firefighters are nearly 10% higher. Getting that diagnosed is just like... Uh, it, it stopped me in my track. PTSD is common, yet rarely talked about. There is still a negative stigma surrounding, you know, talking about what you feel or what you see. And it's an occupation that the whole family signs up for. You just have to have in faith, right? Yep. That they go to work and that they are going to be safe and that they are going to come home. The Fire Life podcast is twofold. It helps the public understand why these men and women are heroes. I will say this. But also gives firefighters an outlet to open up. So to have a, a forum like this where we can talk to each other and, you know, uh, have our voices heard and our feelings and that kind of stuff, you know, it's good. We're not just, you know, faces and badges and so on. Is that, you know, there's definitely human beings that live and work here and we care about what we do. Julie Brownman is the public information officer for Adams County Fire Rescue. You like to win, right? <laughs> she started the podcast last August. I think they pay a big price for their career. They're, um, you know, obviously putting their lives on the line as we just heard. The sleep is tough. These guys just went through a night where they had multiple calls at all hours of the night. Um, I want the community to know the reality of the job. In this episode, they reflect back on the Boyer's fire. It was pretty just routine day, kind of slow, you know, things were going on because COVID was just, you know, starting to move its way throughout the United States. Lieutenant Mike Tobalas and firefighter Mark Meredith were the first ones in. We were making our connections to the hose line when I saw something drop from the ceiling. And so I looked back at Mark and directly behind him was blue horizontal flames. I turn to my right and see fire just blowing past my face and he called for abandon the building, abandon the building, abandon the building. That means you leave everything in place and you get out now. It means things have gone from bad to worse and our lives are in imminent danger. He later described it as a movie scene. He said, I've never seen anything like it. He said the ceiling was collapsing behind us as we were running out. It's those details you don't normally get to hear. Details that make you appreciate what these men and women sign up for. It's one of those things where it makes you think about life and what you have and, and what could have been taken away. Inherent risks often not talked about. Yeah, I mean. Details often left out. Yeah, like we're untouchable. Emotions tucked away. Sometimes it's hard. And now an outlet for them to let down their tough exterior and be more understood by those they protect. The podcast can be found wherever you find your favorite podcast. Just search The Fire Life, a podcast by Adams County Fire Rescue. You know, guys, my dad was a firefighter for L.A. City for 32 years, and it was very, very rare that he opened up and shared details about what was actually happening on the job. So this is great because it really gives them an opportunity mm -hmm. to, you know, open up, but also lets people really understand the dangers of the job. Yeah, and, and you know, it's just such an interesting perspective, too. I mean, you don't hear it always. You are talking about how... Um, you know, firefighters don't talk much about it. I'm sure it's very therapeutic for them as well. But, uh, you know, these men and mm -hmm. women, they work long hours. They don't sleep. You know, I feel like they don't get paid enough for, you know, saving lives. And it's really great to hear about their experiences. Yeah, I mean, that was fantastic. I, you never get to hear stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, kudos to Julie for starting that thing and, and to you for, for uh, letting us know about it. It's, it's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, and kudos to the firefighters. I mean, I know it's hard for them to sign up for that in the first place because, again, they're so tight-lipped about things. But the fact that so many are and they're sharing really, you know, deep personal stories is pretty incredible. For sure. Yeah. All right, let's check the weather.